Hi guys, welcome back. It's so lovely to see you and I know that the COVID second wave is dying down and India is recovering and the rest of the world is also recovering. But there is a question and there is a fear in all of our minds regarding these variants of interest, variants of concern and primarily the Delta variant and the Delta Plus variant. In this video, we will be discussing about what the Delta variant is, what does it mean to our lives in the future, what does it mean to our travel trips, what does it mean to our holidays, what does it mean for school and how do we get over this whole COVID-19 Delta scare. If you are somebody who's interested in any of these things which I mentioned, then this is the video for you. I am Dr. Santosh Jacob, orthopedic surgeon and COVID-19 physician from the city of Chennai, Tamil Nadu in India. And I have been treating the COVID, learning about the COVID and also trying to share information about the COVID-19 so that we as a community are able to beat this disease. So now getting straight into the points. First, what is a variant of concern and why are we so bothered about this Delta variant? Just to put things in perspective, we have a body which analyzes all the PCR tests which we do and if there are any peculiar characteristics about a group of those infected or any clinical symptoms which are different, then they do something known as epidemiological intelligence survey and they assess if there are any mutations or if there is any variation in the current virus. And they have identified that there is not just one variant of concern. We all know about the Delta, but there is actually an Alpha, an Alpha Plus, a Beta, a Gamma and a Delta. So by June 2021, the EU has said that there are five variants of concern and they have also identified another variant, which is the Delta Plus. And this has been identified in 38 cases in the UK just last week and we will be talking all about this. Do you guys know that we found out about the Delta variant of concern in December 2020 and by June 2021 the Delta variant had spread to over 85 countries especially the second wave in India, Moscow and in UK. Now May 2021, the EU and the ECDC, okay, the European Centre for Disease Control has identified the Delta variant and the Delta plus variant in 23 European countries and all this anxiety about the variant is because of certain modelling scenarios which the ECDC has done and the results are quite alarming. Don't worry guys, they have also told us what we need to do in order to not be on the bad end of the spectrum and I will be explaining all this in this video too. The Delta Plus variant is the Delta variant with another additional K mutation and this variant has been identified in 38 cases in June in the UK. And so we are being really careful about analyzing and assessing where these variants are rising. Why are we analyzing these variants and why is it important? It is important because it changes two things. One, the infection rates. Two, hospital attack rates. Now, what is infection rates? Infection rates is how many people does one person infected with the Delta variant able to infect? So let's take the first Wuhan strain. The R0 of the Wuhan strain was 1.2. That is, if one person was infected, 1.2 people he or she would infect. The Alpha variant of concern that had an R0 of 2.5. So if one person was infected with the Alpha variant, 2.5. 
five others would be infected. And the Delta variant has a transmissibility rate or an R0 of 4.5. So it is quite transmissible. And this is the reason all of us want you to wear masks so that you can protect yourself. Why doctor, if I'm vaccinated, why should I wear masks? This is because of immune escape and I will be talking and explaining about this in a little bit. Before that, what is hospitalization attack ratio? It means how many of those who are infected end up requiring hospitalization. And it is being seen that the Delta variant has a slightly higher hospitalization attack rate than the Alpha variant or the original Wuhan strain. Now that you have understood that it is more transmissible and it is causing more admissions, let us understand one very important thing about the Delta variant, which is immune escape. We want to know if this Delta variant can escape all the barriers which we have set, which has worked against the earlier variants. That is immune escape. So we want to know if the same medication which were used for the previous strain also works with this and third. Do the vaccinations work as well for this too? So coming to whether it reinfects somebody who has already been infected with the previous strain. Yes, it does. It is not higher, but it is almost the same as the previous strain of the SARS-CoV-2. Now, what about the medications? There is an interesting experiment which was done. This is known as an in vitro test where the Delta variant was grown in a lab in a Vero cell culture and they took sera or blood from those vaccinated, those infected and in the vaccinated, they took it from those vaccinated once, vaccinated twice and they saw how the virus interacts and they found out that when those who are vaccinated once are exposed to the virus, they have a very high chance of getting it. Whereas when those who are vaccinated twice are exposed, the possibility of them getting infected is almost the same as the previous strain. So guys, get vaccinated twice. And also there was a very peculiar test done in Germany where they tried heterologous vaccinations and saw if it was more efficient. So what is heterologous vaccinations? As many of you have asked me, can I take one of Covaxin and one of Covishield? In Germany, they finally did a trial with two different vaccinations and they found out that heterologous vaccinations provided as good an immune response against the Delta variant as a homologous vaccination if you took the same thing. I think that is quite encouraging because as people who will be traveling to different areas in the world, we should have access and taking different vaccinations should be safe for us. And the third thing, immune escape against medical treatment. What was done is in the lab, they again checked if this Vero cell Delta variant responds to monoclonal antibodies, all four of them. And they found out that the monoclonal antibodies were not as efficient in killing the Delta variant in the lab as it was with the previous strain. So yes, there is some amount of immune escape and yes, we need to alter a little bit of our medications. But from this, what is absolutely clear is if we vaccinate twice, we are fully protected. And that is the point I want all of you to take. Coming to the modeling scenarios, they designed four modeling scenarios. In the first one, we do as we have been doing till the end of Jan 2022, that is masking, visoring, covering our eyes, social distancing, vaccinating, taking your vitamin D. If we continue doing it, then the third wave does not happen if we have strict precautions till Jan 2022. Coming to scenario two, say we stop 50% of our masking, social distancing, vaccination till July. Then the wave starts in the mid of August, the third wave, and it rises till January. So scenario three and four are if we continue only 50% of, of the precautions we are taking till August and September. And guys, 
This threat assessment brief, which I am simplifying for you, is on public domain and I will be adding the link below. The ECDC says that if we stop 50% of our NPI or we stop non-pharmaceutical interventions, the third wave is going to start in August and it is going to continue till Jan. This is what we have to do in order to stop the third wave and the Delta variant from causing havoc in our lives. This is a five-pronged approach. The first one, of course, all of you know, is to vaccinate, get vaccinated, twice be fully protected because studies are showing that even the Delta variant is not capable of infecting more than 10% of those who are fully vaccinated. Forget hospitalizing them. Second, travel. Make sure that when you travel, you protect others around you. Wear a mask, be fully vaccinated, do an RT-PCR test. And if you're sick, don't travel, guys. How else did the Delta variant get to 85 countries? Someone did not think of the other person or someone did not have the information of how much damage to others' lives they were going to cause. From one case in December 2020 to more than 300 million of the variant. It didn't happen on its own. Human beings helped. Let us stop. Point number three, non-pharmaceutical interventions or NPI guys, because masking, social distancing, double masking, telling people if you're sick and not traveling and vaccinating. This is extremely important. And also another extremely important pharmaceutical intervention for prevention is vitamin D. Evidence is there all over that it works. So keep it above 60 nanograms per deciliter if you are in India. Testing and sequencing. This is something I would really like to explain in detail. So you need to do something known as genomic sequencing in order to identify if you are RT-PCR positive and if what you have is a Delta variant. But there is also another way to identify. If you have the S-ORF gene, Okay, just remember this. Say maybe if you're RT-PCR positive and you want to know if you have the Delta variant or not, you can ask your lab to identify or sequence a gene known as the SORF gene. And depending upon the presence or absence of this gene, you can be designated in a simplified manner as a variant of concern or not. Apart from that, there are rt PCR specific assays to mutations which can be done but they are really expensive so this identifying of the S gene is an easy way to make sure that you don't have the new Delta variant and finally because of the Delta variant we need to do contact tracing and see if we have transmitted the Delta variant to other people because of all the things which we learned about the Delta variant in this video. This is it guys and as more information about variants of interests and variants of concern will be coming up, I will be bringing them to you. For questions, thank you guys for waiting so much and not getting irritated with me that I haven't answered your questions in spite of promising that I will. The reality and honest thing is that I find it really really difficult to get all the questions from different platforms and my team has come up with a solution just log into www.drsantoshjacob.com and we have a page there where you can put down your questions and i will go through each and every one of them and answer them to the best of my abilities if you like this video subscribe share press the notification button let's share information about the covid 19 and win over this disease See you guys soon. Bye-bye. Click book an appointment. Select a specialization. Select date and time. Fill up personal information. Select your mode of communication and submit. Fill up your payment information and select a payment method. And get treated at the comfort of your own home.